A good op-amp datasheet contains dozens of parameters, and when you're designing a circuit, usually you will need to consider most of them. Hello, and welcome back. Today I want to talk about a specific op-amp related parameter, which is not commonly present in the datasheet, but is still crucial to be kept in mind when designing a circuit, the power bandwidth. What is the highest frequency where you can actually supply the needed signal amplitude? I will be looking at how this value can be determined and its significance. To start things off, let's look at a couple of parameters which do appear in almost every operational amplifier datasheet. So what I have here is the NE5532 low noise op amp from Texas Instruments. It's quite a common component in the audio field. And the main parameters of interest today are found if we scroll down a bit. So here in the electrical characteristics table, we have the unity gain bandwidth set at 10 megahertz. And a bit lower, we have the slew rate, which is nine volts per microsecond. Now, other than these two, we also have the maximum output swing bandwidth, but we'll come back to this in just a little bit. If we start with the small signal open loop gain of a typical op amp, it's a graph where on the x-axis we have frequency, usually a logarithmic scale, and the y-axis is voltage gain, expressed in decibels. There are three main parameters that the datasheet will contain that help us create this graph, if it's not already there. So you will either find the unity gain bandwidth, which is the point where the curve intersects the axis, the frequency at which the gain is 1, or another way of expressing this is by the gain bandwidth product which shows the slope of the line. In our case, with the NE5532, the unity gain is occurring at 10 MHz, but knowing that the gain bandwidth product is also 10 MHz, let's us calculate the gain at different frequencies, say at 1 MHz, which will be a gain of 10 or 20 decibels. Now, the last parameter of interest is the DC open loop gain, which expresses the maximum gain the op amp can have at DC. So the gain bandwidth product holds true only until it hits this line. Then the DC gain takes precedence, so that becomes the new limit. Now, the reason why I'm insisting on this graph is because it helps us determine the maximum gain versus frequency where we can actually use the op amp. So for example, I cannot amplify a 1 MHz signal by 40 decibels using this op amp since that value is outside of the graph. I would need to use two op amps, each set to amplify by a factor of 20 decibels to get the 40 decibels in total. Also, if you really want to get into the details, when you do build an amplifier set to a gain of 10 or 20 decibels, the actually achieved gain is a curve with a rounded corner, usually something like this. So you don't actually get to amplify the one megahertz signal by 20 decibels. And if you consider tolerances, then the graph can also get shifted. Anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is that based on the small signal analysis, this amplifier should be able to amplify a 1 MHz signal by a factor of 10. But can it really? Now, while measuring the open loop gain can be quite difficult, especially because of the very large variation in gain over the entire frequency range, the closed loop gain is far simpler and a more common measurement. So what I have here is an oscilloscope and signal generator, which together can create Bode plots. The generator output goes into the test circuit, and the oscilloscope measures both the incoming signal as well as the output at multiple frequency points, and then proceeds to calculate the voltage ratio and phase difference. So the test circuit is a 5532 op amp based amplifier that has a gain of 11 and the test signal that is being used has an amplitude of 10 millivolts. So now, if we do run the measurement and let it conclude, we can observe the flat gain appearing up to a point, and then, in this particular circuit's case, there is a bit of gain peaking, and then the gain drops off. So right before the gain bandwidth product limit, the results are a bit more unpredictable. But a bit lower than that, the op amp can indeed amplify a signal reliably by the ratio set using the resistors. Bode plots and similar measurements usually fall into the category of small signal analysis. And the important thing to remember about that is that it holds true 
for small signals, not for large ones. Both small and large signals are relative terms, not referring to a specific signal value, but rather, small signal is a signal so small that the circuit behaves almost linearly, while with large signals, the circuit's nonlinear behaviors become obvious. To better understand this, let's next look at a large signal parameter. The slew rate of an op amp refers to how fast the output can change. So the typical way to test this is to apply a sharp large signal square wave at the input, and if we do this and we observe the output, we will see a non-instantaneous transition. So the output presents an almost trapezoid waveform, where, at least in the middle, we have a very straight line. This rate of change, voltage per unit of time, is the slew rate. And this expresses how fast the output is capable of changing. This is not related to the gain that we've set or the frequency of the signal, it's strictly an output stage limitation that every op amp has, and it will impact any signal that we try to pass through it. To check this behavior, we can go back to the same setup as before, but instead of sweeping through multiple frequency points, we just drive a basic square wave and observe the input and the output. So for starters, the input wave needs to be large enough to overdrive the output, but not too large to damage the op amp. The scale between input and output will be different, so if the op amp is configured to have gain, but anyway, after making some configurations, we can observe the results we are after. While the input is a sharp square wave, the output is a clear trapezoid with a measurable slope. The slope, so the voltage per unit of time, is the slew rate of the op amp. And if we run the numbers, we can see that we are slightly below the datasheet value, but still close. It's important to mention at this point that a real-life circuit will usually not be used in any of these extremes. The signals you will be working with will not be infinitely small, nor will they be so large that they overdrive the output. Most practical applications fall somewhere in the middle. So how can you determine if your amplifier will actually be able to amplify the signals that you want? This brings us to the main topic of the day the power bandwidth. In short, it's a parameter which expresses the frequency at which you can output a sine wave of a certain peak amplitude before being limited by the slew rate. The parameter is independent of the gain that is being used, and it only expresses if the op amp's output stage can create a certain signal or not. Considering the slew rate of the 5532, I created a small table of frequencies and amplitudes. So for example, you can output a 500 kHz signal, without distortion, only if the peak voltage is smaller than 3 volts. Higher frequencies are of course limited to lower amplitudes. So playing around with the signal generator, we can observe this phenomenon in practice. When the output is relatively small, it's a clean sine wave, and the input to output ratio is 11, as we've set with the gain resistors. But as the input signal increases, First visible thing will be a degradation in the gain ratio, but then the waveform will also get visibly distorted. So while the op amp is capable of amplifying a 500 kHz signal by a factor of 11, this will only happen without distortion, as long as the output is small enough to not exceed the slew rate limitation. Observing this phenomenon is not restricted only to a theoretical datasheet analysis, or a practical measurement. You can also see this in the circuit simulator. And as always, it's usually quite recommended to check your circuit before building it, just so you don't have any unwelcome surprises. So what I have here is an op amp model I found online, and the basic times 11 non-inverting amplifier configuration that we've been using until now. So with this basic setup, we can do an AC type of simulation, to get the small signal behavior. So if we run the circuit and check the output, we can see the 20-ish decibel gain value, as well as the 0 dB gain point, which for this model at least, is around 8 MHz. Also, there is no gain peaking, but it's important to remember though that for the AC simulation, the small signal that is being tested is actually infinitesimal. It's not a real value that could be adjusted like with the practical setup. 
Anyway, moving forward with the slew rate test, we can apply a square wave on the input and observe the output. So if we run the circuit, plot both the input and the output, we see the expected trapezoid wave. And if we check the slope, so just by going over it and looking in the bottom left corner, we can see that we are getting somewhere around 6 volts per microsecond. Again, not the data sheet value. But to be fair, I'm not really sure about this model's original source. So it could be that it's not really for the component we're looking for. And in all fairness, normally for the slew rate test, you are using the amplifier in a unity gain configuration. But even if we do that and we look at the slope again, we are getting more or less the same value. So that's not really the issue. Finally, we can do an actual sine wave test. So apply a test signal of 500 kilohertz, but use a variable amplitude. So go through multiple amplitude steps. By doing this and looking at the output, we can observe how it changes. It goes from something that looks sinusoidal to something that looks triangular. Now, to make all the waveforms a bit easier to observe at the same time, so all of the different amplitudes, we can divide them by the input amplitude parameter. So by doing this, they are all more or less of the same size. And this helps us better evaluate them. So the first two, the green and the blue, actually look like sine waves, whereas afterwards, when larger amplitudes are being input, the shapes are getting smaller and more distorted. So the op amp is no longer capable of generating them. Before finishing, let's look at some data sheets and the parameters contained to get a better idea of what can be found and what to expect. So first, if we come back to the initial NE5532 data sheet and look at the unity gain bandwidth and slew rate, you might think that if we need a faster slew rate, so if we want more than 9 volts per microsecond, we should be looking for a higher frequency op amp, so something that has more than 10 MHz of bandwidth. But that is not necessarily the case. So for example, the TL07X family of op amps, another set of common op amps used in audio applications, has a gain bandwidth product almost half at 5 MHz, but the slew rate is double at 20 volts per microsecond. So while the two parameters are not completely independent, they're not clearly linked either. Anyway, if we now come back to the 5532, one interesting parameter mentioned is the maximum output swing bandwidth. So this refers to the largest signal that can be output, plus minus 10 volts, and the frequency at which this occurs, 140 kilohertz. So this is the same value that we get from our slew rate based formula, but here it's cataloged for a specific use case. If you need other values, you still need to calculate them. Last example to mention is the OP27 datasheet, another common op amp. Here, other than the slew rate and gain bandwidth, we also get a nice graph, which expresses the maximum output swing as a peak to peak voltage, versus frequency. So this is a complete graph going over all frequency points and it contains the maximum amplitude swing bandwidth, so up until the horizontal line stops, but also every other frequency afterwards. So with this graph at hand, you no longer need to calculate yourself, but of course you can create such a graph for any other op amp based on the slew rate parameter and the maximum swing info. In the end, the design of an op amp based amplifier is quite a complex process in which, among other things, you need to check if the circuit can actually deliver the waveforms of interest. Not just because of the bandwidth limit, but also because of the slew rate limit. And there's also a bunch of other parameters you need to keep in mind, but that's a topic for another time. So for now, hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, there are more similar videos on my channel that you might want to check out. And if you want to be up to date with my latest releases, also consider subscribing. See you next time. Bye bye.